Good evening. We begin tonight with yet another reason to be wary of the Made in China label. Tenants of a high-rise apartment building in Vancouver now have plenty in common with parents who've been caught up in this huge toy recall. But this time, the problem is in the pipes, copper pipes, carrying water to two dozen suites. Those pipes, made in China, have burst so many times that the building's insurance company is now refusing to pay. Ron Benzi has our top story. I'm walking along here in my, my stocking feet, and my socks are getting wet as I come here, and I, I'm kind of, there's a squishy feeling as I'm walking, like I'm bouncing, and the, the water had got under the floor and floated the floor up. It's been five months since the latest flood, and our Pita Métis seventh floor suite still looks like a construction zone. The moldings have been torn off, the hardwood flooring ripped up. Although she's been living here for just over a year, there have been four separate floods in this building in that time, three of them affecting her suite directly. You know, at some point you don't see it. I, I, I think the things that bother me are like, you know, I don't generally have friends over for dinner, um, you know, I get social life is a little different, uh, and, and sometimes I feel like I'm not settled. All the water came from the suite above hers where this water pipe cracked and split open. An engineering report from the building's insurance company points to substandard copper piping imported from a specific manufacturer in China as the cause. It says it's a problem that should be addressed by the developer and the new home warranty provider, but so far nothing's been done. The plumber and the plumbing supplier know that the uh, pipe is default or defective, and so they're willing to change them you know, and fix it. But the developer has to get in and open up the drywall so they can get into it, and he's not answering. He's refusing to answer about taking any responsibility for it. The company behind the high-rise is Piccadilly Developments, the same company that shut down the Piccadilly Hotel earlier this year, deciding it was cheaper to tear it down rather than meet city safety codes. When asked about the situation at Crystal Court by Global News, a company official had no comment and hung up the phone. And while there's no indication of how widespread the problem is, the engineering report says it first started hearing complaints in July 2004, and it's aware of pipe failures in at least three other buildings in Vancouver. I don't know what to do anymore. I was like, when I got on the council, I'm all gung ho. Oh, you know, I can talk to them. I can make it work. I'm in construction. I know how to deal with these guys. No, nothing. Plumbers are scheduled to go through the building next week to try to locate more of the defective piping. Tenants say they can't afford another flood since their insurance deductible has gone up following the last one from $2,500 to $50,000.